Okay, that's how the GPS sits. Let's see if it works. I gotta take the dash off. I wanna take this is where I used to have the uh, spot mounted. I'm gonna carry it on me now. A little better idea in case they fly off the bike somewhere and the bike goes way down the road. So I'll take that off. I'm gonna put a, another GPS mount there. This will be for the camera. This will be in case I use the, my little GPS for something or other. So I gotta undo the dash and unbolt it. Put the new one on. So like I said, we're gonna be changing uh, the rear tire, front tire, we're gonna be changing the front brake pads, the rear brake pads, the sprocket, rear sprocket, front sprocket, chain. We're gonna be doing all that. Get her all good and ready for the 2020 season. Also got a, uh, a little uh, KLX needle kit for the carb. We're gonna install that. So we gotta take off the seat. I gotta drain the tank, take the tank off. It's always good. We're, we got winter around here right now, so it's always good to keep the tank full so you get no moisture in it. It's a steel tank. Plastic tanks are okay. So I'll tank the seat. Got to get that. Side panels. Gotta, I'll put a new uh, air filter in there. Just generally make sure everything is good. Change the oils. I did the fork seals last year. So these are all my uh, tools and stuff that, were, that I found from a previous trip many years ago. I haven't put the, uh, the tank bag on for a long time. All this stuff was crammed into it. I got my tool kit and my air pump. So all this stuff down here fits into that tube down there. A good place to carry the uh, tire changing stuff. There's the, the tool kit. On my tools, tank bag, a Wolfman bag. I really like that bag. Holds lots in it. It's got a rain cover. So I have to be able to take apart the bike with just these tools. Anything I do to the bike, just these tools. So that's what I'm going to do today. You'll have to excuse the, the noise. That's the furnace heating up the garage so I don't freeze. Just taking off side panels. You're taking off the tank, you gotta take off these front fairings, so you gotta take the screws out of the top. This is a Gen 1, what they call, up to uh, 2007. You gotta remember to pop those out or you'll snap that off. I did have those glued on at one time, I'll have to re-glue them on. It's much easier to put it back on with all those falling off. Yeah, you can see the old glue in there. Now there's how I have the electrical. I got a distribution box set up under here. Everything coming off. I got uh, the vest. I got the two plugs on the front and the heated grips. And I still got room for two more. But so far, that's pretty good. I haven't had any issues with it there. I just put dielectric grease on everything and collects the dirt, but keeps it uh, from corroding. And that's the, the ground block right there. Ground stuff from there. Uh, 
I got a bunch of ground wires attached to one screw on there, so I'll have to figure something out here. Maybe put another ground. Hey, okay, got it off. We got all these grounds. A whole pile of grounds I gotta find a place for now, but have to reroute some of these I guess. Okay, the way I was able to mount this new uh, GPS holder was I just drilled two holes through and so I put two longer bolts in and it picks up all the grounds that were on the other two, so that works. So I think we're good. Oh, and the heater went off. Oh, amazing. Now I just got to put that back in. This is my own uh, dash design fabricated out of a piece of aluminum and just put whatever stuff on I kind of want and change stuff around and it works though. Yeah, it looks like everything works. Oh yeah, that's how the GPS sits. Let's see if it works. All right, it looks like it works. It just went into, because uh, the USB port just went into uh, storage mode kind of thing for USB. Right on. Okay, I just had a quick look. I pulled the spark plug cap off. That looks okay. The line looks okay. But you can see the spark plug is loose in there. So I don't know what what happened there. But we're gonna change it. Actually the plug looks really good. Probably blurry. But anyways, looks good. But well, we're gonna change it anyways. Nice new NGK DPR8EA9. They don't have to be really tight, but they're not supposed to be loose. <laughs> Just three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this cover on. Don't take off the 8 millimeter. It looks like the 8 millimeter are holding it, but they're not. 
There we go. That's a good place to have a rock. Yeah, even the front one is starting to to groove in. Well, I'll see if I can get this off now that I took the chain off. If I can break it loose without spinning the gears, then not bad. Hey, I had to use a breaker bar on this. It was on there good. Run the chain back and secured it. All right. Well, the seal doesn't look like it's leaking or anything, so that's good. Okay, front brake, a little pin right here. You can see that. There's a little clip right there. A pair of needle nose. Pull that. It's like a little angel clip. Don't lose that. And then, you should be able to get that pin out of there. Unless your pin is seized in, then you might have an issue, but... I've had mine out before, so... There's the pin, a little hole. Brake pads swing up and out. Still quite a bit left on these, but I'm going to change them. I'll run these later. We got the nice new ones, EBC, heavy duty, severe. Put it over the pin here and. Slide it down. Now when you put the disc back in, you're not probably not going to have enough room, so you'll have to push this in like that. Push it equally on each side and it'll go in. But right now, I'm not putting it back on right away. And then you got to put the pin back in. Try and get that little hole lined up so that you can get this little clip in. Put my fingers in there. And push it in. That's all there is to changing the front brake pads. Nothing to it. And uh, they say you shouldn't let it hang because it's hard on the thing, hard on the cable, so they're on the hose. So I'll just put a couple threads in and let her sit. That's the front brake pads. Yeah, the rear ones, basically you just have to push. You gotta push this in equally on each side. Which sometimes is tough. Push it until uh, you get the brake pad out. I push the piston in too, probably.
there. Just get it out. Hopefully you can see that. trick is getting that bottom one to sit in there so you can push this all back. That. There. That's all there is to chain in the back brake pads. Still a fair bit of pad left. Once I wear these out, I'll put these back on. That's the brake pads. Hey, okay. new chain, old chain. Got to, uh, I'm going to hold them up, measure the lengths, make sure I don't, I probably have to cut a couple of links off. I think I had to cut a couple of links off this one. Just to grind, grind the head off and take a link off. New rear sprocket, it's going to go on the rear tire. I'm running a 16 on the front. And a 43 on the back. Seems to be alright. It's just an O-ring chain. The other one lasted fine, so bought another one. Got a master link for it. Brand new. You just gotta make sure that that thing is facing that way, the drive. Never had an issue with them. Not enough power on this bike to break anything. So, let's see what we got here. Yeah, you can see this one's a little bit longer, so... I'm gonna have to lay this down and mark where I gotta grind it off. Okay, so I gotta take that off. I gotta grind this one down, pull it apart. Okay, safety third, wear your gloves, eyeglasses, safety glasses, and you should have a guard on here, but eh. comes off like that and then this part is junk junk see the little o-rings and a little bit of grease on there I think they give you enough o-rings to redo it This is just a JT uh, steel sprocket. Nothing fancy. I put a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on. And everything I everything I've been doing to this bike, there there's probably several different ways of doing it. So, my way is not necessarily the easiest or the fastest or the best, but it's the way I do it. And I'm not shining up too much because, actually I'm not, not shining up anything really at all. It's just going to get dirty the first day anyways.
just do it a crisscross just to get an even set on it. I'm just snugging them and now I'll crank them a bit. I don't really want these to come off. I had one guy that all the all the nuts came off while he was riding. We had to find a, a sign and dismantle the sign and use the nuts for that. It just happened bolts and the nuts worked. That's a new sprocket. That's a 12 mil, 12 mil socket for those nuts. If you're interested, pack some new grease in these ends. Bearings feel good. Unless you got the proper tool, you just got to keep trying to squish this on until it gives you enough groove. There. Finally. Alright, chain is on. Got to adjust the chain. Adjust the chain, put it down so the tire grabs on the ground, and then uh, torque that front uh, sprocket on. Alright, if you want to learn how to do all this kind of stuff, and you got a Kawasaki, even if you don't, whatever you got, I suggest you get one of these. It tells you. Everything you need to know. And our chain slack is two inches up and down. So all the way down, all the way up. That's a little bit more, I think. I'll go a little bit more. Keeping it nice and even on the adjustment. That's probably about right. All right, so pretty much done. Put the sprocket tightened up. So the tires are brand new, brakes are brand new, sprockets, chain. Got the KLX needle kit in there. Put the bags on just to put them somewhere. <laughs> oh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. We were all raised to be poor.